Okay, Dan, Hardwood Hollow Skills Channel here. And I've got a couple of uh, quick reviews uh, for you. The first is, uh, they're both Smith & Wesson. Uh, the first is the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. Uh, got this one the day before Thanksgiving on uh, sale at Cabela's, $329. It included the rifle, it included the Smith & Wesson red dot optic, and it included a, a tactical style soft case. Uh, came with one uh, magazine, uh, they're 25 round M&P magazines, and uh, this is the soft case it came with. So it's got uh, three external mag pockets here. Back that as far as I can go. Um, so it's got three external mag pockets here, and then it's got a zippered pocket here. And it came with the customary lock. Uh, it came with a little piece of uh, Picatinny rail, and of course your uh, warranty and manual and all that. And then the M&P 1522 magazines look uh, similar to an AR magazine with the exception of only being small enough for 22. They have a little tab on the outside to get it started. And then you have a knob on each side right here that you can pull down to make it easier to load the magazines. I bought a spare. Um, I found it at, I believe I bought that one from Cabela's, the spare. And then I also found these, which are 35 rounders, and they are from um, uh, Plinker Tactical. This is the current generation. It also has the little starter here. Now, I did not purchase it, but Plinker Tactical makes a loading tool that grabs onto this little tab right here and then pushes it all the way down inside the back of the magazine to make it easier to load them. Uh, I didn't necessarily find it terribly difficult to load them. Um, I haven't loaded them up to a, the full 35 rounds, um, but I bought them because the standard Smith & Wesson mag runs anywhere from depending on where you find it, $20 to $35. Uh, I found these on sale, I think from CDNN, possibly. I can't remember exactly. They were on sale for 9 bucks, so I bought two of them. I figured I, I did some reading on reviews, and all the reviews I found indicated they were having problems, but the most recent review was a year ago. He didn't have any problems. The rest of the reviews were four to five years old that were having problems, so I'm assuming that they have worked out the issues with them. Worst case scenario for nine bucks. Uh, I'm a certified armor, so if they're, and I've, I've been doing gunsmithing work for 20, 30 years now. Um, I figure I've got the skill, if I need to, to slightly adjust or modify the feed ramps to get them functioning correctly. So for nine bucks, it was worth it to me. 18 bucks for two of them, um, and I think the shipping was six or seven bucks, so they were cheap enough for the experiment. All right, put that aside. So, pretty simple, basic rifle, like I said. Uh, it's a red green dot optic, it's a free optic, so it's not the clearest dot. Um, as you know, on cheap red dots, the dot's going to be the clearest in bright light or the cleanest. As it starts to get low light, even if you turn it down, you get more of a halo around the dot. Um, I don't have a, th this camera's not good enough to show you what the dot looks like, but it's your normal M4 style adjustable stock. Uh, I'm a big guy, so I generally have it all the way out. At some point, this is your standard mil spec style. Uh, with the, the checkered pad. At some point I'm probably going to go with a slightly lower profile uh, mag pull that's got the rubber pad back here. Not because I need it because it's 22 
long rifle, but just because I like the way it looks and I like the way the rubber feels uh, against my shoulder. Um, like I said, it's, it's a recoil operated, so there's no gas system in here. Uh, 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 AR-15 style charging handle, it's just a short throw. Um, your safety, standard AR-15 style uh, safety for safe and fire. Upright position like this is fire. Uh, middle, uh, this position with the arrow pointing forward is safe. Um, I believe it's a plastic safety, not metal. Yeah, I can see a molding seam in the center right there. Um, and then your standard bolt hold open. So when you pull your bolt open, push, push that in and that locks your bolt open. There is no dust cover. There is, however, shell deflector and of course no forward assist. Uh, it's an all polymer upper and lower receiver. Uh, it does have uh, steel takedown pins. Um, actually that might be a metal safety. Let me, let's just do a quick scratch test and see. Yeah, I think it's metal. I'm not sure if it's steel or aluminum, but it is definitely metal. Um, uh, aluminum uh, uh, mag release right here. We'll put the mag in so you can see what it looks like with the mag in. And standard, we'll flip it around here, standard uh, mag removal like any AR-15. Push the button with your trigger finger and it pops right out. Uh, I took it, I got lucky I guess. Uh, oh, like I said, all polymer upper and lower and uh, polymer handguard. Uh, this is the upgraded handguard that has uh, uh, five rows of M-lock all the way around uh, at uh, probably about, uh, this one's probably about 133, um, probably about uh, uh, 430 here, and then at 6. And then it's got full length Picatinny all the way across the top. Like I said, it did include one... Um, short section of, of Picatinny. Uh, I have not put any, have not installed it because I haven't decided if I'm going to put any accessories on it yet or not. I bought it mainly as a plinking gun. So if I put anything on it, I may put uh, a Magpul uh, uh, forward grip, not the, not the forward grip, the angled forward grip. If you're not sure what the angled or AFG is, I have one on my kel here. I will quickly show you. so that you know what an AFG is. This right here is the kel AFG, the angled foregrip. So when you grip, you're gripping like this rather than like this, which is a lot comfortable for, which is more comfortable for a lot of people. Uh, I find it quite comfortable, so I may wind up adding one of these onto the Smith & Wesson. Uh, it gives you a, a stop for the short, shorter barreled guns so that your finger won't, won't travel out in front of the muzzle. Um, so this is the one I, I bought for this kel -Tec. I really like it, so I'll probably add one of that, those onto the Smith, but the Smith is a very lightweight gun, so I wanna keep it that way. Uh, I'll probably do a video on this eventually. This is the kel Sub-2000 Gen 2, uh, which by technically speaking, it's a Gen 3, because the very first kel was the Sub-9, and then they bumped it up to the Sub-2000, essentially the same gun, just a couple of differences, and then the Sub-2000 Gen 2. So, I may at some point do a review on this one as well. But, getting back to the Smith & Wesson, uh, as I was saying, I got very lucky. I pulled it out of the box. I mounted the optic, uh, tightened the optic down uh, just with my Leatherman tool. Uh, took it out and in less than five shots, I was hitting steel at 25 yards, no problem. Um, within 10 shots, it was dialed into the center uh, of the target. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. On the first shot, I was hitting steel uh, within five shots, I had it fairly well centered, and within 
within 10, 10 rounds I had it dialed in. Now I haven't sit down and set it on paper, uh, shot it off a bench to see exactly how accurate it is. Again, like I said, it's just a plinker, but I'm able to hit uh, offhand a 12-inch uh, a steel plate at 25 yards, actually 30 yards, pretty much all day long, uh, just with this red dot, and that was done within 10 shots, 10 rounds. So I got lucky. Sometimes when you put a red dot uh, on a rifle, it takes a lot of shots to try and get it dialed in because there is no way to uh, easily um, bore sight uh, a red dot. You pretty much just have to shoot it in. Uh, doing it on paper at about 10 feet and then just walking the paper target out until you get it to the range you want uh, is the fastest way to do it that I've found. Uh, I didn't do it with this one. I just threw it on there. I had steel sitting at 30 yards. I started plinking at it and I was hitting it. So I just dialed it in for that. Uh, at some point, I'll probably go ahead and, and put it out, uh, uh, do a, a video where I'm actually shooting it, and we'll try and get it dialed in for better accuracy off a bench. Um, it does come with a flash hider, which includes a uh, half 28 threaded muscle, muzzle. So if you wish to put a suppressor on it, you can. Uh, I'm told that these fire quite well with a suppressor, uh, with no other modifications needed. Um, I don't, do not have, nor do I have any intentions in the near future of purchasing any suppressors, um, but uh, uh, I'm told that they function quite well with them. So that is the quick tabletop review of the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522, and we'll stop this one right here. This is Dan, Hardwood Hollow Skills Channel. Remember to always practice proper firearm safety. Uh, remember your four safety rules, universal safety rules. Treat all guns as if they are loaded at all times. Never let the muzzle cover or point the gun at anything you are not willing to shoot or destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to fire, until you are on target and ready to fire. And last but not least, be sure of your target and what's beyond it. Don't want to be shooting anything by accident if you have a through and through. Not as likely with 22 unless you're shooting paper, but um, you never know. Uh, perfect example, I was shooting uh, a 9mm at a steel target, and it wasn't what was beyond it, it was what was next to it. And I had the can of spray paint that I was using to paint the steel, uh, and shrapnel from the steel deflected out and hit the spray can, knocked it off the target stand, and had spray paint spraying all over the place on the ground. So, perfect example. Now, I was completely safe because I was 30 yards away. Um, but just an example, shrapnel from a 9mm round, fire from a pistol, uh, splattering off of the steel plate was enough to, um, to uh, explode that can of spray paint. So, and that's a, that's a steel can of spray paint. So, just keep that in mind. Um, remember to wear your... your Proper protective gear when you're shooting, of course, is your uh, uh, eye and ear protection. I prefer to wear a hat also. And uh, uh, so there you go. This is Dan, Hardwood Hollow Skills Channel. Uh, have fun. Be safe. I'm out.